Hi, I'm Tom Vassell. And I'm Melody. And today we're taking a look at Yokohama. This is from Hasashi Hayashi. Uh, it is a worker movement game, maybe? Uh, it is a game uh, which you are trying to get points. <laughs> it's a Euro game, right? There's a, a lot of different ways to get points in this game. You're going to get points by turning in resources and moving people around the board. I'm going to give you kind of a quick overview. Here it is. Now you'll notice here that this game has a ton of pieces, right? Uh, you're going to have a, a bunch of boards that are going to be placed here. And this is actually going to, there's going to be fewer boards if there is less than four players. So you go on the back of this one, this one's only used in a three or higher player game. Each player is going to have their own player board where they're going to have on here different assistants and they're going to have shops and they're going to have trading houses. This is stuff that they don't have yet. This board is basically, they're going to be having actions that let them pull these things off the board, although it costs money to pull some of them off the board. Players are going to have a pile of assistants and these uh, shops and a president at the beginning of the game. Now, the game is all about getting points, and there's really a lot of ways to get points. But basically, on a player's turn, they're either going to place two assistants in the same region, or they can place three assistants in three different regions on the board. After they do that, they will place their president on a region if it's in their hand, or they'll pull it into their hand if it's on the board stuck somewhere where it can't move. That's something that you don't want to do. Or, if it's already on the board, you can move it to another region, except you can only move through areas that have assistance of your colors, and you cannot move into a region where there's another player. Once you are in a region, you are going to use that president and use whatever the power of that region. You're first you're going to see how much power you have. Power, your president gives you a power. Each assistant that you have there gives you a power. If for some reason you have either a shop and or trading house in there, they will also give you power. So you can see here, for example, I have five power. Once you use the power, your assistants are going to be removed from the board. Uh, when you eat, the different boards are going to do different, different things based on the power. Many of them are pretty basic. This is going to give you one of the four main resources of the game, fish. While over here you can see another one. You know, if I have three power, I'm going to get three uh, plant resource. Up here, there's money. Over here, there is technology. And technology is going to let you buy technology cards. So, for example, let's say I have four power for technology. On this board in particular, you'll have to spend money and um, different import crates to get more technology points. And then you would go to the matching technology board that's uh, up here, and I can buy technology. Each technology card has a cost. Along, some of them have more of a cost depending on where they are. And these technologies are going to give you special points. Like, for example, whenever I build a trading house, I'll get three points. There's also a board... You'll notice down here, this board here will let you trade goods. And I'm not going to go into every rule on what every board does, but each of the boards are either going to give you a trading, uh, you know, some sort of resource. There's bricks and fish and plants. There's also, there's money. There's also boards that are going to let you, this one in particular, will let you pull stuff off of your board to put into your hand. And how big your power is, is how many things you'll be able to pull off. Uh, this board here, there's multiple boards that let you go to the port or the dock, and you can take different contracts. There's a board full of contracts. Depending on your power, you have more contracts that you can take. When you take a contract, you'll keep it. You have a hand of three contracts. Before or after your turn, you can fulfill these contracts by turning in those resources, and you'll get points and or money, and sometimes like here an import crate or being able to put more assistance on the boards. There's various rewards, but mostly for points, which by the way, you'll notice we're keeping track of points on this board here. So again, remember I said that this was a, there's a smaller board. There's only one technology board and one of these contract boards for two players, but there's more in a three or four player game. There's also a church board. And one of the boards gives you a certain amount of faith points and you'll be able to place your assistance on this faith board. Uh, and get 
points that way and also put more assistance on the board. There's also a custom management board. If you get any of those uh, basically export cubes, you can turn those in for a whole lot of points. Again, putting someone on this board. And the board that I showed you here, the canal, this is nothing special, but you're allowed to move through the canal from one board that's next to it to another board. You just have to pay a coin to go through it. So players are on their turn. They're going to be putting out some assistance. They're going to be moving and taking advantage of the board that they're on. When you are on a board, if you get a power of four or five, you can also, if you have a building, place a building on that board. Each player can have one trading house in an area, and where you place a trading house will give you things. For example, this will give me a point, and these will give me two resources of my choice, one resource of my choice. This one here, I can pick four points, one point, or put out two more assistants. And if you have a trading house, you can also put a trading house on a spot, which will give you just basically a pile of points. Also, on each board at the beginning of the game, a random tile is placed on the fifth power, and if the first person to do five power on any particular board will get that tile, which here, for example, is a bonus of three yen. So you get some coins besides getting the three bricks. So players are going to be going around. So you're going to be taking this, you're going to take turns. At the end of your turn, you're going to look, maybe the, there's three gold cards here in the middle of the table. So the first person to get five bricks will get eight points. Each other player will get six points or here. The first person with four technology cards or the first person build four buildings on cards that have that symbol. And these cards are going to change from game to game. And if you notice, by the way, these cards are going to change uh, based on a board. So there's a lot of variety in setup. So players are going to keep going until one person has built all their shops or they've built all four of their trading posts or the certain number of cubes are on the custom management board or on the church management board or the order deck of cards has run out and then the game ends. There's a few end game scorings. Whoever has the most cubes on certain boards will get some bonus points. And that's pretty much it. The only thing I did not mention is you're trying to collect sets of different country icons. That's also some points at the end of the game. And if you ever get two cards that have the same icon on them, you if there's any left, you can get basically a foreign agent, which you can use as to turn one of your cubes into a president, basically letting you have an extra action on your turn. There's a lot more involved in the game than what I said, but that's basically it. You're gonna put out some cubes, move your president, take an action, next person's turn. Keep going, one of those victory conditions happens, everyone gets one last final turn, you do final scoring, most points is the winner. Now this is definitely Euroized, right? Yes. It's Yokohama and it's about building up a port and all that, but there's really no, there's no like theme to it. Okay, so we'll just forget about that part. This is just a collection of mechanisms. And this is a worker placement game of sorts, except you, you can't just place your worker anywhere. You have to move your worker. What'd you think about that? Um, I thought it was really interesting that if you wanted to move like your president, it's what it's called, right? Right. The president from one spot to the other, you had to have like that connected route. Um, so sometimes that would like mess up what you wanted to put out, but I thought it was pretty interesting. Right. It's, it, it's, it's kind of intriguing to some degree, and yet at the same time, it's not as cutthroat as I thought. Even uh, in a, in a two-player game, it's not cutthroat much at all. But in a four-player game, it can be occasionally. But for the most part, sometimes you're like, oh, I want to go to that spot. All right, I'll go over here. You know, there's times where people will go to the spot that you want to go to. But for the most part, you can move around or even get a technology to let you move to where another president is mm -hmm. anyway. Uh, but for the most part, you can kind of move around. And the cubes are interesting. What you'll find more often than the cubes is you'll run out of them. And you want to put more cubes in the board and suddenly you don't have enough, then you have to pull more off your board. Especially since to claim the um, different, uh, basically, bonus victory points or to claim faith things in the church or to yeah, claim the docks. You have like four cubes on it and that's wasting a lot of cubes if you want to use them out. Right, each time you put a cube. So you need to pull more stuff off your board. And I, and I suspect, strategic-wise, that pulling stuff off the board is probably key to the game even though I'm not going to make any claim to be good at this game. In fact, if you want to see, Melanie and I played a two-player game of this live. You can watch that. Um, but I played it with the different player counts, and I like it. It's fast. I mean, even with four players, it takes maybe two hours at the most. It, it says on here 90 minutes. It's, I think 90 minutes is closer. And for a game that's this involved and this complex, the, the longest part of this game is the setup. Do you and, agree on that? And like the first couple turns, because people are deciding like their 
Yeah, but once you know what you're doing, that first turn is, I'll do this, I'll do that, you know. And like, like I've said when we play the game, I think it's almost always better to put out three cubes rather than two in one spot. But sometimes you want to do that too because you want to get those bonus fives. And make the turns go faster. Instead of wasting two turns putting it out, you could just put two and then move that person and do it. That's true. That's true. So it's kind of intriguing. There's some things in this game which are not you and new and unique. You know, the whole get goods, turn them in for cards, get points. You know, we've yeah. seen that before. Um, and even the moving the assistant, the, the, the president around, reminds me of a very popular game called Istanbul, which um, is a, like a lesser version of this, maybe? Probably. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I feel like... There, I've seen a lot of comparisons actually online about them, and I was like, this reminds me, oh yeah, Istanbul. But they really don't play the same. This is more like in the category of Uwe, Uwe Rosenberg's games, like Caverna and Lahav and things. It's kind of the same feel I got from this one, where you're slowly building up, and pretty soon you're out of cubes on the board, or you get your trading posts and your shops out, and suddenly you're like really taking cool actions everywhere. Yeah. And so the game kind of escalates pretty neat. Stuff is being shut down, but at the same time, there's always... It's, it's a game where there's always something interesting to do. Yeah. What do you think about the graphic design and just how much stuff there was? Sometimes I thought it was a little busy because um, when I was like setting up for the review of the board, I was just like, there are a lot of pieces that I need to put out. Here's that. Here's this. And like sometimes I had to double check. Did I put out everything? Because it's just so much. But it was there, really simple for how many pieces there were. So. It's a really a lot of pieces out there, and I understand that they want to make every game different. Uh, I, I don't know that I would have just made a board that you could have flipped two sides to the board, maybe. Uh, but yeah, you're right. This does offer more replayability, but when you're looking at it, it's a visual just, <laughs> what is going on? And it looks a lot more complex than it is. It's really not that complex. Mm -mm. You get resources, you turn them in. You have texts that give you cool special abilities. And by the way, I love the text. I love any game that gives you special abilities. Mm -hmm. The most complicated thing is maybe the, the church? Yeah, I thought um, that, that was probably like the most complicated part because you have to like count everything that you have. and like. But even okay. that's not that complex. Mm -hmm. And like it looks like you have a lot of options too, but once you like start going down a path, like you're just like, okay, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do that. And it's like not that much of choice. Yeah, and turns aren't that long. I like that, especially in four players it comes around. It plays really well with two players, but the four player, it still moves at a nice pace where it's not one of those games where you kind of zone out on your turn. You're constantly saying, okay, what am I going to do next? Oh, it's my turn. Great. I'm going here, taking money. Okay, your turn. And sometimes, of course, a move someone else makes will mess you over. But overall, I was very impressed with this one. I think Me I'm going to hang on to this one for a while because this one feels different than a lot of the other Euro games that we play. So that's Yokohama. What would you, what's your final thoughts on the game? Um, I thought it was really fun, um, and I can't wait to play it again, so. Alrighty. Well, that is Yokohama. I'm Tom Vassell. And I'm Melody. And this has been Double Trouble. Boom! Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.